Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Zach Watts, and thank you very much for joining me on this brand new video. I know it's been quite a while since I've uploaded anything. It's been a while since I've recorded anything. Unfortunately, today is not going to be a highly positive um, video, but I'm highly motivated to make this, and I'm going to make it. <laughs> so today is the 25th of June which marks the nine years kind of anniversary since Michael Jackson, the King of Pop, passed away. And I kind of want to take this time to reflect on him and what he's done in my life and how he's impacted me. Kind of like how he's changed me as a person, changed my whole outlook on things, my perspective on certain situations. So I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible while trying to go in as much detail as I can. So this video won't be amazingly long, but I want to make a video because I adore this man. Just want to keep his memory alive. So since my last video regarding Michael, um, I've gained probably like 200 subscribers there's going to be a whole lot of you guys out there that don't know the whole story of how i was first introduced to michael kind of like the journey the road that i took from being first introduced to him in a mostly negative way to having nothing but positivity and just pure admiration for this man so to start off this little video, I want to go back in time till about 1999, 2000 or so, when I was about five or six years old. Now I had no idea who this man was, I had no idea what impact he had on the world. The way that my family chose to go about showing me this was more than evil. <laughs> my earliest memories was I was about five or six years old and my grandparents, they would tell me to come into the lounge room and have him on TV. Now, I don't remember to this day what it was, but it was some kind of like doctor slash emergency kind of video. I don't even know if that's correct, but that's vividly what I remember. And at this point in time, Michael had gone and done a lot of plastic surgery. And for some reason, he was the living devil to me. He absolutely terrified me just the way he looked. It scared me so much that as soon as I saw him on TV, I ran out of the room screaming my lungs out. I'm not exaggerating. And that was kind of like the family's little meme, I guess, showing me pictures of Michael and stuff just to get me fucking frightened. So that probably continued five or so years. Um, and then it kind of slowed down, nothing really happened. And then really my only next memory was high school. This was when I was starting to discover new music. I was starting to discover new types and genres. One day I was like, fuck it, I'm going to try and listen to him. And from that moment on, everything changed. My whole outlook on him, my whole perspective on him, my obsession fucking started. <laughs> And all that in itself is just a perfect example of judging someone by the way they look. So now it's about 2007, 2008, like I said, and I'm starting to listen to his music. I'm starting to get an idea of what he's all about and what he has to offer in the music industry. I didn't know his level of fame at that point in time, I don't think. And my grandparents and my parents were like, what the fuck is this child doing? We've traumatized this guy with Michael and now he's starting to like him. I don't know what they were really thinking, but it would have been a fucking mindfuck because who goes through that much trauma as a child so many years later starts understanding who they are and really listens to them and starts obsessing over this person? I don't know. So skipping forward a few months, I've got albums, I've got posters, I've got t-shirts of this man, Michael Jackson, in my collection, and I'm, I'm having a fucking ball. I'm doing my research, uh, I'm learning about his history, he's got quite a fucking interesting history, everyone knows that, from the abuse as a child, from his father, who currently is actually in hospital for terminal cancer. There's a bunch of negative comments um, regarding like karma and all that stuff like you get what you deserve. I can't help but feel sorry. You know, it's still sad regardless of how he treated Michael and the other and his brothers. I don't know much more on that, but I really hope he pulls through. 
And not only all that stuff, but you also realize that he's been doing a lot of charity work. He's been doing a whole lot of like campaign kind of things to save the world. And you can hear that in his lyrics and stuff. You know, he's been donating millions and millions of dollars to these charities to help people. Just watching interviews as well, you can see how passionate he is about helping people and the world animals and just all the positivity he doesn't think anyone is evil even his own father who bashed him with you know belts cords and all that maybe even his fists i'm not too sure about that don't count me on that he was still able to forgive his father and that there is a pure example of what happens to me i am forgiving to every single person maybe too forgiving and that's what I try to do to every single person that comes into my life, even you guys, and more than likely even people I'm going to meet in the future. Now in saying that, it's fantastic to forgive people. It's probably the best thing to do, but with that comes consequences because you, you can let your guard down forgiving these people and then they can easily enter and create that same toxicity that they did previously. But for the most part, it's really good. It's really humbling to feel like you can forgive people. And that's what he projected to me. That's how I interpreted some of the things he said. 2008, a year before he passed away, he had impacted me so much as a person. Now we have to talk about his music. The music is iconic. The music is full of fucking groove, funk, everything you can think of, he's got it. Everywhere from influencers from the blues to jazz to fucking metal. And the crazy thing about his music is that it it doesn't get outdated. You can still listen it. You can still listen to it day by day, even 2018. You can still blast the shit out of his tunes. And for me, it's not just the music that's iconic. It's his fucking personality, the way he went about life. Um, regardless of what he's experienced, I've re I've experienced nothing to the extent that he has. You know, I've dealt with a bit of abuse here and there growing up as a child. I won't go into that. And the fact that he was able to endure so much trauma and pain and suffering as a kid to an adult and still send out such a positive message to the world, that's got to say something. But as every other Michael Jackson fan, I wish he was still alive. I wish he was still making music. I don't think he would have got any more music, would have played This Is It. There's no doubt in my mind that it would have been the biggest tour in the history of music. Um, but to finish this video off, I'm going to suggest you guys a couple songs to listen to. Everyone knows the Bad Album. And the way that I'm going to try and suggest these to you guys is mostly the lyrical content. You know, it still applies today because the world's gone to shit. So the first one I want to give you guys is Man in the Mirror. Everyone knows that. It really, it's basically just talking about you making a change. You can't expect anyone else to. You've got to start with yourself. The next one is underrated as fuck. It's called Just Good Friends. He did it with Stevie Wonder and it's probably the greatest song in history. Right, so now we're going to move on to the Dangerous album. The ones I'm going to suggest for you guys is Why You Want to Trip on Me. It doesn't have really a... Uh, message per se but i know a whole lot of you guys out there love um sort of heavy sort of rock um kind of influenced guitars this has a good solo at the beginning and it's got a good tune and melody to it um however track number seven heal the world everyone knows that heal the fucking world because this shit's the, this world's gone to hell all right everyone knows thriller everyone's heard thriller I don't really need to suggest anything to you guys there. Um, however, most underrated album of all time, his Invincible album, I believe it was his last um, release. And and I've got a lot to suggest for you guys on here. First one, Unbreakable, which is very applicable today. People are very offended by anything. Even saying that the toast was burned is enough to send someone into a frenzy. Um, so basically it's just saying, you can say what you want. You can do what you want. You're not gonna break me. So basically, man the fuck up. Track 11 is called Privacy. This is probably one of the heaviest ones he's done. I guess it could also be applicable to today's life where there's no privacy. You've got social media, you've got paparazzi, you've got the news, you've got people surrounding you that want to know every single thing going on in your life. You can't do anything in secret anymore. Everything's got to be shared. Everything's got to be thrown around, rumors and all that. You know, just give, give us some fucking privacy for once. And then we're going to give the debut solo album off the wall. This thing is the best thing I've ever heard in my lifetime. Um, I'm going to suggest to you guys track three, Working Day and Night. 
It's groovy as hell. The beginning of this thing is like a little beatbox kind of sounding thing. It's fantastic and I love it and you should love it. If you didn't like this video, give it a dislike. Don't give a fuck. If you like to give it a like. If you like this, um, subscribe. As I always say, I do not run your life. I'm not the boss. I'm not the queen. Do whatever you want. But yeah, I'll see everyone eventually in a new video. All right. Bye guys.